So why don't you, uh, you know, share some of your work with us? That'd be great. Yes, I would love to. Um, I'm going to start with a poem called Articulations. You'll see the old courtesies, plastic bags hung in a roll from a budding dogwood branch for what must exit a loved body, celery top spotlit on a stump for an audience of local varmints, the little free library's door left unlatched by the International Church of Cannabis. You'll see the Hunger Games again, the same dystopian Diana bleeding through a neighbor's window. You'll see the vernacular poetry of Marquise unite behind the science. Skylark will return after this episode of the Twilight Zone. You'll see what it means to be a vector communicable. You'll see a man living beneath the awning of a shuttered cantina shouting to himself to you, to whatever remains of traffic, to anyone in earshot. You'll see the way you wear your luck, your air pods, your cardigan, your gifted floral mask, a fearful, deferent wave. You'll see the new polytess, the dance of distance, a turn into an alley, a step onto grass. You'll see cliches dismantled, rush hour, express lane, bumping into anyone, being social, crossing paths. You'll see how long this lasts. Mm. And I'm gonna read another poem. This one's called Undercooked Chicken. Some weeks I'd see it once a day at least little nuggets of raw rotocrosite, matte but begging to glisten. Such was the life of an apologist. Such was the life of a chicken. How strange the flesh turned toxic in the afterlife of its electrocution, its defeathering too instantaneous for pluck, lightly seared on the company grill, lost in the pink of a child's mouth. It's like it was still clucking, his mother may have said, of the bird nested in the alleged tacos. Always another joke. Chicken, sashimi, wild-caught salmonella. We had our line. The health and safety of our guests remains our top priority at all times. We had many top priorities. We washed our hands on the top of the hour and between tasks and after touching our clothes, skin, face, or hair, and once inside the restroom and once outside in view of the guests whom we were to address as such, never customers, the mere suggestion of money enough to rip clean through the paper thin fellowship between server and served. Once I was served a breaded, deep fried filet of chicken breast, what we in this country refer to as chicken fried chicken, with a gorgeous grapefruit center at a Gunther Tootie's. Such a thrill at 14, the biohazard in my booth on my pristine white plate. The manager, a cocky greaser, offered at the top of his voice whatever I wanted from the menu, anything at all and after a dozen beats of my darkest meat, in deference to the beauty and assertion of manhood, I ordered a vanilla shake, nothing more. Chances are you have a story not unlike mine, what the industry calls an incident, a screw in the salad, a shared queasiness after the lunch and learn. Once a woman, pregnant, freshly fired from our restaurant, on her way out the door, grabbed by the neck a bottle of Cholula and hurled it against the tiled wall, an explosion of hot sauce and glass that became many incidents. Suits to dry clean, lacerations to stitch, a great many burrito bucks to dole out, not to mention human resources. 
Oh. Um, I'm going to read one of those quarantines I alluded to in the introduction. Um, the title of this poem is just Quarantine, and the lines are numbered in this one, but they don't, you, they don't have to be. Okay. Quarantine. One, as when pressing pause, present becomes the past. Two, days dusty as I have managed to make them. Three, up later than I'd like. Four, hiding my heart. Five, hiding from it. Six, hope beneath the dust. Seven, hope the dust itself limbed on the altar of my bookshelves. Eight, a nimbus of moats and palm olive fumes. Nine, I lie in a hammock three quarters nude. Ten, sun glinting off chains, chest, arms. Eleven, wanting, that is, lacking, depth. Twelve, all he would have cared about is my happiness and fulfillment. Thirteen, I feel exactly toasty. Fourteen, wanting, that is, lusting after, depth. Fifteen, to deal with what's going on, to deal with what's happened. Sixteen, epiphany being always manufactured. Seventeen, having killed many emotions. 18, I fear still. 19, things are complicated. 20, and then I win $3,000. 21, from the distantly congratulatory quiz master. 22, yes, I say to no one in particular. And 23, there goes a little bit of my heart. 24, a love of men, of a man. 25, and cottontails, love and wonder inseparable. 26, from pity, pride, from resignation, acceptance. 27, the only depth in the moment. 28, hiding behind the family therapist's couch. 29, instead of talking about the divorce. 30, it's still too fucking much. 31, the heart. 32, the illogic of it. 33, no one merely cleans out their closet. 34, the agnostic allows an alleluia. 35, to cultivate lightness, to slide from the top of my game. 36, and visit negative space, what used to be a goodwill. Buy nothing, donate only time. 37, weeks pass. 38, outside the window, weeds blooming with tiny purple flowers. 39, an unsparingly blank canvas. 40, dusty in the corner of a spare room. Do you think I have time for one more? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. great. Yep. I'll read one more um, quarantine. And this quarantine is called Quarantina. Every day I count myself lucky. My only losses have been queens on drag race. Week one, I lost Dahlia. We all did. I got the coronavirus. We all did? Week two, we lost Rock M. Sakura, which is hard to say, and I got my nasal swab. Week three, we lost Nikki Doll, hardest yet. My test came back positive. N-B-D. I was and am asymptomatic. Ashley symptomatic went home week four and my brother went to the hospital for a night. He's fine. Paula Moneri embolism went home week five and so did pneumonia Lisa. Double elimination. And my brother got a new kitten, Xena. Zelda, his old cat, went to live with his ex and is still a kitten, old in the sense of ancienne. Jan went home week six. Poor Jan, really liked her. Week seven, I think, was the whole thing with injecting cleaning products. It could have been yesterday, it could have been decades ago, to tell you the truth. But yeah, we lost the widow. How did you feel about that one? She killed that Chaka Khan. And mom called to say the guy getting grandma's newspaper in the morning and bringing it to her door tested positive. 
But it's week 10 now and she's fine. Somehow Jackie Cox is still here too. Hmm. Great, great. Um, so anyone have any questions? Now I see Sarah there. I'm sure Sarah has at least five questions. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. I can. Yeah. Oh, I... we can that was great, James. Thank you. And now I really, I just, all I can, all I can, wait, I can start my video. Hi. Everybody's here. Hello. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> All I can think about is writing a quarantine now. Do it. It's like, it's not hard. Um, there's something, I don't know, something feels appropriate about it. Are you going to write like a crown of quarantines? Uh, what would you call it? You know? A quarantine of quarantines or a gaggle of these? I really love Quarantina, like that. A Corona of quarantine. quarantine <laughs> yes, obviously. yes, yes, that's, that's it. Quarantine. You got it. Thank you. You did it. But that was so easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it just, it, it writes itself. It really does. So can you say hi to James? Hi, James. Hey, Sid. Hi. You know, so James, the only problem is we're having chicken for dinner tonight. <laughs> you may want, may want want to switch out there, or just get some Cholula and uh, you know, put that in a glass. Yeah, just make sure that it's a uh, hundred forty degrees. Yeah. Well, you know the the uh, you know the hundred forty degrees. I, I think they're like like your own temperature, where it used to be ninety eight six, now it's lower. I think the mm. hundred forty degrees they, they've raised up a bit. That that the base temperature. Yeah, it's amazing how these standards are kind of changing. You know what, Mommy? Yeah. So yeah, we... Go ahead. We were learning how much, how many unknowns, unknown unknowns there are, <laughs> I guess. So what's the, what's the next, uh, you know, are you working on another book? or are you just kind of writing and, and see what kind of assembles itself into a book or? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm at just the total like planting seed, sowing the field stage at this point of, of my next book. Like just kind of Johnny apple seeding things into the earth and, and seeing what takes. It's, re it's really fun and um, it's given me a lot of like things to look forward to during this kind of uncertain time. Like just uh, thinking about the future is wide open. It has been really, really nice. And then I think we, I don't know if we asked Sarah this or, or other poets, you know, do you spend time each day or do you spend time when the kind of creative urge rises up? How, how does that, come about? Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky to be in a, a community workshop right now with the poet Carolina Abade teaching it. Her work is absolutely wonderful. I can't recommend her highly enough. Um, and so we have, we have some um, weekly prompts that I've been responding to, um, but I've also been kind of just on the fly when something strikes my fancy writing it down and the quarantine form is just a really easy kind of fallback of it's it's a comforting form i've found like form can be really comforting having a having an objective um kind of box to to conform to is one of the one of the great um, comforts of of poetry, I think. So, when it when I want to just exercise my craft, I can use the quarantine form as a kind of doing the scales kind of uh, exercise. 
and I guess the you know difference between our articulations and, and the uh, uh, one of the other one of the other well the the, the two quarantine or the the, the quartanes. You know, one you had numbers and one you didn't. Yeah. Was, was the one with number? I, I guess the question is, there was was that was there more emphasis there that the numbers gave it more than, or added to the words that were in the sentence? The. Uh... I think the numbers add a little bit of anxiety, like the the idea of crossing off days on a calendar is a sort of anxious and very kind of time conscious process. I think my original idea for the quarantine was like each line represents a day somehow. Um, like whether it's in, this day sucked. I, did, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Um, it felt very short and insignificant. Like it can be a really short um, kind of glib line. Or if there's something, some image I saw that day that was completely arresting and seemed to somehow encapsulate the day, then it, that could, that line would be its sort of little shrine or altar. Nice. But yeah, I, I don't, I don't know about number. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think I would want to number the lines for every one of these poems. Like, I think it, it that kind of in relentless numbering can be really um, dominating. So in some ways though, I found the numbering part easier to listen to, like I could follow it better. I think the biggest, um, the, the, my own difficulty is listening and catching the whole poem, especially when they're long. Yeah. And so somehow, the quarantine in general worked for me because I could I could kind of follow it. I guess that's what I want to say. Good. Yeah, maybe I'm sort of giving giving the numbers short shrift. Right. Hey, Joe. I don't know if Joe can hear us. Maybe she's muted. She's on. She's on the phone. Uh, like uh, Karen Lightstone or or Ken. Do you have any questions? Hi, Karen. Hey, Karen, a friend? Someone yeah, Karen's Karen, Gainesville Karen. friend. Hi, James. Hey. <laughs> Hi. <Karen>. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> so Sarah, we're just going to rename this the Mastheads Reunion Poetry Hour. That could work. Yeah. Um, Sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, Anybody else have any questions? I mean, I'd, I'd, wow. love to hear, I'd love to hear some more. I mean, I, I thought the poetry you was know. great and uh, the Heck Prize is a great prize, so. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I'd, I'd be happy to. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We're only kind of, you know, halfway through our time. Okay, uh, great. Would you, read, would you read from your book, from the? Oh, heck yeah, I'd be happy to. <laughs> let me let me pull up the uh, the manuscript real quick. All right. Okay. So yeah, my book is called Club Q, and it's named after the only gay bar in Colorado Springs, which is where I grew up. Um, and if you're not familiar with Colorado Springs, it is a very beautiful town with very um, scary uh, kind of cultural ideas. Um, very strong libertarian streak. Um, the Air Force Academy is there along with several other military bases. So there's that. Focus on the family is there. Um, there's a great big mega church called New Life Church, which is where I went to as a kid. Um, and so my book deals a lot with uh, the evangelical church and it's kind of being at odds with queer culture. Um, so I'll read the title poem from Club Q. I stand for quest, which is to say mission, as in our mission is to provide a safe space for you to be yourself, which is to say it is not always safe for you to be yourself. For queen, 
as in a 6-4 share, hosting Wednesday night karaoke, always the first and last to sing. For quarters, which is to say jukebox, eight ball, cigarettes, home. Of course, I stand for queer, which is to say unique, which is to say alone. I am queer in a military town where cadets count out football scores in push-ups and blue angels bar up the sky. For quarantine, for questioning, as in how long have you known, as in would you like to dance, as in a dance floor empty save for two men kissing, a patio fenced in, the warmth of a fire pit the sweetness of his saliva after three gin and tonics. For quick, which is to say alive, which is to say mortal. I am quick as a number scrawled on a cocktail napkin between pages of a one-year Bible on a nightstand, quiet as the fist-sized cloud rising from the sea after Elijah slaughters his 450th prophet of Baal for quench, to satisfy, and to extinguish. I stand for rainbow, and I stand for rain. Uh, should I read another? Sure. Okay. Yes. Th thank you all. Um, I like this poem. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna read a poem called Spiritual Warfare, um, which is after a real Nintendo game by the same name um, that was made by a Christian video game company called Wisdom Tree Incorporated. Um, and it was unlicensed for the Nintendo Entertainment System, um, but it still worked with the hardware. Anyway, so this is Spiritual Warfare. Your enemies are not killed. They are converted. Occasionally, a convert will drop spirit points, which you can use to purchase things like fruits. Each fruit has its own unique method of attack. Pears, though weak, come in handy in the slums since they can destroy large weeds and junk piles. Vials of the wrath of God. These are basically bombs acquired in groups of three or seven. Samson's jawbone acts as a boomerang. You'll need this to get the raft. To begin, enter the red door and receive an apple from the Christian helper. The basketball player you come across in the park is of no consequence. Do not go into the bar in the shipyard. You will lose the belt of truth and have to go to the pawn shop in the slums to retrieve it. Using the raft, cross the lake and search out the gray-haired man in the airport. He is slow and weak. It takes only three vials to convert him. He will drop the helmet of salvation, which renders you invulnerable to dynamite. Once you have obtained the banana, pass through the woods and enter the prison under which lies the demon stronghold. The demons are vulnerable only to the banana. You will soon be in a black room with the demon master. He can be defeated with persistence. You will know you have damaged him when his color flashes from red to a lighter red, an almost imperceptible change. Right. Uh, you know, uh, James, how about one more and then we'll, we'll see if there are any more questions. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to read a poem called We Are the World. Part of me wishes they weren't plasma screens. The waiting rooms, Panasonic televisions glowing with the King of Pops, solid gold funeral. Part of me would like rabbit ears, glass bulging and gray, a loose vertical hold, some reassurance that what's inside the machine is nothing like what's inside me. 
Part of me wants poverty for consistency's sake. TVs and clocks to drain away the time and spit it back. When I hear my name, I enter booth seven, swallow a thermometer, and say what I need to say. Two yeses, 28 noes. The entry site on my right arms still bruised, so let's do the left today, thanks. We remove to the fiesta deck to row after row of chase lounges and IV bag cocktails. Nothing's audible over the motor's pulse, but I can still see Brooke Shields tower over a dense rank of children and sing her silent elegy into the microphone. The machines take what they want and return the rest. Ladies and gentlemen of the donor floor, we are the world. We pump our fists for four draw cycles. The essence of us drips the color of dehydrated pee into a plastic jug. Unhooked, we will sign for our 20 bucks and jab the straw into our Kool-Aid juice sack. We will suck it dry and stumble our way out double doors into the double sun. Great. Any more, any more questions? I don't know what to ask. <laughs> Anybody? Anybody have any questions, comments? <clears throat> That was terrific. I loved it. Thank you. As I said, I'm not going to eat chicken again. I'm going to wash my articulation. You know, the whole thing is I've got to take away. I've got to have takeaways from this. Yeah, it's know? a learning, a learning experience. It's a learning experience. I think it's either listen to the poet or don't listen to the poet. One or the other. <laughs> or don't do what the poet says. Yeah, it's yeah. your choice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, great. No, James, thanks. Uh, yeah. Once Let me again, thank you. Me. I really, really appreciate this. I mean, I honestly sort of feel like I was flown out to uh, Massachusetts for this. It's really cool to be speaking to you across two time zones and all that stretch of America. Yeah, and I want to well, thank, Sarah. I want to thank Sarah because Sarah introduced us to uh, you know so many of of, of the, the poets that have been involved with Mastheads. So we we kind of have the Mastheads, as I said, the Mastheads alumni group. Is, yeah. is presenting, uh, and then Ken, who's on the call, is also going to be presenting later. Later, so uh, no, it's really great. I think uh, you know, for me, this is just such a breath of fresh air and the chance to, you know, just listen to all the words kind of just flow. It's really, really very nice. Agreed. I'm looking forward to future installments of the series. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, please join us. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Yeah, my Very pleasure. Good, Thank you. I'm not bye hearing bye. More, yeah, not hearing more questions. We're going to sign off for today. Good to see you. You what too. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Thank bye. you so bye, much. Guys.